And welcome back. Mike Quincy from Consumer Reports is here answering your car related questions. All right, this person's asking, should I buy a car with a rebuilt title? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> a, rebuilt t a rebuilt title means that the car was was uh, totaled by insurance company and and depending on the state where it came from, it might have a really vague uh, you know annotation on the title that kind of throws people off. But if it says rebuilt title, if it's a salvage title, I wouldn't go near it. Uh, you don't know if it was been flood damaged. You don't know if it's frame damaged. Uh, there's lots of used cars out there. Uh, I would just say keep keep shopping regardless of how tempting the low price might be. All right. The next question is, are extended warranties on new car purchases worth the money? So Consumer Reports looked into this a few years ago and surveyed its members, and we found that over 60 percent of the people in our survey that that bought the ext extended warranty never saw a dime of it, never used it. So my, my advice would be it, it generally try to buy a reliable card to begin with and an and extended warranty will will not be a factor. However, if you have your heart set on an Alfa Romeo, a Jaguar, you know, some model that is that is typically really poor in reliability, you just have to have this car, then I would look into the extended warranty, but you've got to read the fine print. There's lots of stuff that might not be covered. The data is all in the automaker's favor, so they know what might and what, what might not break on the car. So, so you know, you're almost betting against the house in, when, it, when it comes to, you know, data analysis and extended warranties. Yeah, I love when they say it covers bumper to bumper, right? That's the big headline, but then there's all that fine print of all the exclusions of that bumper to bumper. It, it, it's all in the details. Mm -hmm. All right, so this next question is, what is the highest, highest mileage you should consider when shopping for a used car? It really depends more on on the car and the condition of the car than the miles. Uh, for example, you know, cars and built in the last eight to ten years can, can most of them can can get to two hundred thousand miles without breaking a sweat. Again, assuming that it's been that it's been well maintained, has the oil been changed? The filters been changed? If it needs a timing belt, has that been taken care of? Have, has has the previous owner or owners kept up with the maintenance? And if that's the case, you know, buying a, a used car with 100, 150,000 miles might not be as nerve wracking as it as it would have been, say, 20, 30 years ago. So, but but again, it's all it's all in the research. Check out Consumer Reports reliability data for information on used cars, and that's that's really where you start your. Start Search. Yeah, um, this person's asking about hybrid batteries and how long they last. So in Consumer Reports reliability uh, surveys, we're not finding widespread failures of hybrid batteries. Now, you know, hybrids have been around about 20 years and, and the, the prominent makers like Toyota are have, have pretty stout batteries, pretty stout systems. It, it's not that they don't fail, they can. Sometimes individual cells or packs can be replaced and you don't have to do the whole thing. But uh, but yeah, the whole electric vehicle, plug-in hybrids, regular hybrids, you know, we're still kind of studying it, but we're not seeing any, you know, red flags in terms of battery failures, at least not yet. All right, we got about one minute left. Here's what I'm stuck on, pollen and my car. What am I doing or not doing that I should be doing? So uh, cars built around, uh, in, beginning around the year 2000, will likely have an air filter. Uh, sometimes when you go get your oil checked, that they're going to do the the like the, the oil filter but they might also they're going to be opening the hood anyway and they might check your air filter there was one time when my the guy brought my my wife's car had a filter it was absolutely clogged so so one one thing that you can do while you're driving to avoid the pollen thing is make sure your air filter is clean and and you can even do it yourself you can you can uh you spend about 10 or 35 bucks to do it yourself then replace it or or have somebody do it for you another thing you do is keep your car clean if the if the if there's a lot of pollen all over your car then then try to wipe it off because you're going to bring all that on your body into the car and you'll be sneezing and your eyes will be a mess just like mine always are yes for sure all right but definitely change that air filter not just the oil filter but the air filter all right thank you so much mike quincy we so appreciate your time and expertise if you missed any of this it's going to be in the two wants to know section of our website